Hello once again everyone. So as I said in the last video, I am going to kind of go into detail about how to take off various different helmets, and more importantly, how to undo the visors. So if someone gives you the semaphore, or alternative, whatever their equivalent is, or in general, if you are at any armored event or a place where people are doing armor, and someone has just finished fighting and you're not doing anything, go up and ask them if they want their visor popped. Because most people cannot do it themselves, and it goes a long way to making everyone's life a little bit easier. So, I have three different helmets in front of me. We're gonna go through them and talk about all the examples presented, as well as I'm going to describe some other examples that I don't necessarily have on the table. So, first and foremost, we're going chronological order. This is my bassinet. This is the most common kind of helmet that you're gonna find. Um, Aventail, hinge visor, nothing too complicated. When it comes to opening the visor in one of these, all you gotta do, look at the back, there's going to be a strap right here that holds it close. All you need to do is undo it, it'll come right open, so just undo the strap, not a problem. If this guy's stuck, pull it straight, so I'm pulling the tab straight out, push the buckle in, then pull the tab back, and that should clear it, and that shouldn't be much difficulty. Then just hinge the visor open, and nothing really to worry about. Now, some will have an extra pin, we'll get to that when we start talking about spring pins, but beyond that, nothing more complicated than this. If you have to help take this helmet off, the biggest thing to watch out for is, you notice that this cloth, and I've worn it on screen before I think, comes up pretty far, right underneath my nose. You can't just lift this straight off, you'll guillotine someone's nose. Make sure, kind of worm your hands up here, that you're holding this away from their face so that they get the time to tuck their nose down and they'll be a lot safer. Now in the extra emergency that you need to take the visor off for whatever reason, maybe it's compromised, maybe you're just helping someone switch it out, it is attached by these pins here at the side. Mine are relatively loose. I can just knock those out with a little awl and I'm good to go. Others may be held with a chain retaining it to the helmet or something along those lines. Shouldn't be all that complicated and you also shouldn't necessarily need to do that. More than likely, someone will be missing a pin and need help putting it in or something along those lines. So just line everything up. It's pretty straightforward. It's just like Legos. So that is the bassinet. Now, moving forward, we have that pin I was talking about. So this is my bass armet, as we've been calling it. Now, for this guy, you're going to find a tension pin somewhere. Mine is above my eyebrow. Others may be on the side, like on this helmet. And these guys may also have them too. What you do is you need to press that pin in until you hear that click. Then the visor can just be lifted open without much difficulty. The biggest thing to watch out for when it comes to pins like this is that some require a decent amount of force. And the thing that people forget is that as you're pushing on one side of it, the person's head is moving in response to it. They may be very tired, they may not be able to resist you. As such, as you're craning them, that you're not really doing them any favors. So what you wanna do is anytime you're doing this, either on the side or on the front or what have you, take your other hand, push it on the opposite side of the helmet, now their head stays still and that button will move and you won't have much difficulty. Now, while we're here, some other things to talk about are some pins will have uh, a latch associated with them. And in general, latches are just gonna look pretty much like a garden you know, latch on a gate. They're not too complicated to deal with. In the event that the latch has gotten bent or something like that, they're usually not all that thick. You can probably do it with a pair of pliers, but that's more on the Squire team. If that happens on something like this, you might wanna just go ahead and pop the uh, pins on the sides so you can pull the visor off, something along those lines. But the other thing that this helmet simulates that I don't have a great example of is armets and things like that have cheek hinges. So this one doesn't function uh, because it's a bowherd helmet originally, but the idea here would be you would undo this central uh, key. Usually that would be a peg with then you know, some sort of, um, no, in this case it's a turn key, but it could be a peg with a latch on it. And then this overlaps You'll find this a lot more commonly on uh, more you know, armet looking bassinets. You'll also find in some of these that they curl down a lot further than you think and basically kind of cradle the chin. All you need to do when you are presented with that is undo the latch, pull the overlapped one forward, that'll get it clear of the pin, and then the whole thing will just hinge open. Nothing too complicated really. But when you, know, you first undo a visor and someone's like, hey, I need help getting out of this helmet, you may overlook that piece. So double check on all these helmets to make sure that it, you know, where it fits, where it sits, etc. And that's gonna tell you a lot about them. Now the third thing that this helmet has that you might wanna watch out for is a chin strap. So in the event that you have to take a helmet fully off, 
people often forget that chin straps are a thing. And there could be a chin strap on any of these helmets. This one never had one. This one, I removed it, right? So you may find yourself in a situation where just pulling is not doing much and pulling harder is certainly not the answer. So one, ask if they have a chin strap if someone ever asks you to remove their helmet. And two, to get at it, it's best to come from below, worm your fingers up there. And it's better for you to go ahead and get lower to help someone as opposed to asking them to crane their neck up. Because again, this is like wearing a five-year-old on your head. It's not particularly easy to do. And furthermore, the rest of their harness may not even allow them to do that. So, bear that in mind. Now, moving on to our final helmet. This one is not necessarily anything you haven't seen before so far. It's just a combination of the two things we have. So we've got a strap that locks the visor down, and then we've got a pin that holds the visor down extra. So in this case, all you need to do is, because this strap is relatively tight, push in, pull that back, boom, that makes it clear. I can undo it, and then to fully undo it, just a slight depression, visor hinges up without difficulty. Really the special thing to talk about this guy, besides combining our skills that we learned earlier, is that this one sits a lot lower on me. So it comes down to almost kind of mid, well not mid chest, but like upper chest. As such, you may not be able to get your fingers up underneath there if it had a chin strap. You may instead want to come in from the top and see what you can do there. But either way, the main thing that this has that most people don't think about is that I wear a separate liner with it. Um, and this you will find across all these helmets. In fact, I wear an underliner with this guy as well. And then uh, Jake, our resident Italian, actually his liner for his bassinet is not sewn in like mine. As such, you may find a situation wherein the padding moves because it's not attached to the helmet. This in particular can get a lot of friction when you try to pull it off. And again, pulling harder is not the answer. So in these situations, make sure you take that second to kind of, you know, depress that in with your fingers, get it clear, let their nose touch down, etc. Especially when you're dealing with an oven tail, because if it skips off the padding, it's going straight into the nose and there is nothing worse on this earth than feeling that. So again, just take your time, double check, ask if the liner's attached, etc. Most of this will become pretty clear. And again, generally, you shouldn't need to take off someone's helmet. It's more of an emergency thing, and in that case, most of the other people who really know this stuff should be jumping up and helping, one would hope. Most of it is just knowing how to do the visor. So we need to now talk about the thing I don't have pictured here, well, presented here rather, which is talking about perf plate. Now, in regards to perf plate, what is perf plate? Perf plate is what's currently in this guy's isolates, needs to be in this guy's, I don't have in this guy's. Perf plate is what makes eye visors safe. Most times it's not something you need to worry about because it's just attached to the visor. You may not even notice it. Other times though, and this is where we have to talk about salets and more open helmets, it is a bit more of a thing. So salets are really awesome historically because they're convenient. They're really horrible modern days because they were convenient. They're really, really open, which means that to make them safe, we have to add a whole bunch of attachments to it, which is where things get complicated. Now, the biggest thing to look at whenever you're dealing with an open-faced helmet is number one, does the open face move in the slightest? I have seen some where it's quite literally just slots on top of the head. Maybe there's a chin strap, that's it. I have seen others, specifically Bergenets or things like that, where the, it's almost like a clap visor, the perf plate goes into a brim or things along those lines, hinges, which kind of pulls it over, and then it straps like the, uh, like the visor on my bassinet. That's again, relatively simple. Undo the strap, visor should come right out. Yet still though, especially salets, you may find spring pins holding them in place. In which case, the biggest thing you need to do to how do I get this person oxygen is identify how the bever is attached because that's the piece that's going to be either removable or hingeable because otherwise there's no way to get on the helmet. So in the case of my first salet that I wore, well, my only salet, and hopefully my only salet, it had a fully hinging face, meaning that my bever was hinged here and came all the way down. Then my visor closed over that and I was locked in. So all you needed to do was undo the visor, lift the bever, then you could just undo the strap and I was out of there. But even then you could just lift this and I could breathe fully normally. Some may be like that and all you need to do is just find the bever, see if it's attached to the helmet. If it is, odds are you just unhinge it, nothing too complicated. If you're dealing with someone who likes to fight with their visor open, then it does get more complicated and you need to identify whether or not the bever is attached to the perf plate or if the perf plate is attached to the helmet. If you're in the former, that's when things get a little bit more complicated, odds are that there are probably pins holding the bever, the perf plate on the bever attached to the helmet in some way. 
might be a simple lock pin, in which case undo that. And then you should find a strap that goes around the back of the neck. This should allow you to hinge the bever out. Or alternatively, you should be able to then take the helmet off. Kind of like Darth Vader. Alternatively, if you're in a situation where the plate is attached to the salad itself, then it should be as simple as whatever locks the bever in place, undo that, look for that collar strap, pull it off, and they should have an immediate amount of oxygen because that's the one time salads are convenient. So really the biggest thing is look for pins, etc. And if it's more complicated than that, try to find someone that knows their helmet. So what do you do in that situation where someone you know, waved you over or you jumped up because you're a good Samaritan and you have no idea what you're looking at? My recommendation is this. Look immediately for the nearest person in armor who has taken their helmet off or gotten their helmet taken off and wave them over. One, they may be more familiar with the helmet than you. Two, if you don't know any of this person's staff, because, you know, in a better world, we'd all be wearing nice matching colors, you know who's who, they may know that team. I find that as a competitor, when I'm, you know, getting armed, I keep a close eye on who's arming my competitors, mostly because I'm trying to figure out how to stab them better, but also it helps me know who works for who. I may also know the schools better because I've been around, etc. So that does help as a good kind of, hey, what do I do next? Who do I flag down next? Find an unarmored, find a person in armor with less armor on, wave them over. They might know who else to wave over. Or alternatively, just scream real loud till someone gets over. Point is, though, if you don't know what you're looking at, don't struggle, don't try. Get someone else over and see if they can fix it. Now, in regards to moving forward with this, even if you do not do armor and have no interest in armor in the slightest ever, you still need to learn how to do this. Anytime you're around armor and you see someone coming off of a fight, at the very least, go over and ask. You know, hey, do you want your visor popped? It goes a long way to making everyone's lives a lot more enjoyable, a lot more simple. And who knows? Someone may literally not be able to communicate that they need that visor popped, and they may not know a simple semaphore. Hence why I made those, right? Furthermore, if you are someone getting into armor, teach everybody in your school how to take your how to take your whole helmet off. Teach them everything about your harness because even if they're never going to use it, you're going to need them to get you out of it when something bad happens. Well, if something bad happens, right? So make sure that they know it well. Beyond that, though, uh, hopefully this is enlightening. Practice, you know, keep an eye out for things. Just look for straps, pins, latches. That's really about it. If there's anything more complicated than that, I have not yet seen it, but not to say it doesn't exist. People are coming with new stuff all the time. Either way, though, thank you very, very much for watching, and we'll go over some other armored stuff another time.